Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's prayer and Bible study. As always, we're going to open up with a word of prayer, and then we'll get into the Bible study we've been doing the last few weeks. So if you're watching, just uh, follow, uh, follow along and pray along with me. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we have to once again put your word out online. Lord, just thank you for how good you've been to us. Lord, thank you for how good you've been to me and giving me such a good family, Lord, and blessing me so much, Lord. And thank you for how good you've been to our church. Just uh, help the church to keep growing. Help us to keep doing things for you and to go forward for you and how you'd have us to, Lord. And uh, Lord, just lead us and guide us as you would. And Lord, just uh, uh, just doing a pray for the families of the church that are uh, grieving this week. We've got some people that are going through some stuff. And then uh, those that have uh, sicknesses and illness, Lord, just be with those families as well. And uh, and Lord, just uh, help us to, once again just to go forward for you. Be with the services tomorrow. Be with myself and the rest of Sunday school teachers, Lord. Help us just to... Uh, have clear lessons and clear hearts, Lord, and uh, and uh, be able to divide your word correctly. Just be with the Sunday school hour, be with the main service as well, be with that as he's preaching, be with Brother Colton, the children's church, with the teachers back there, Lord, help them to just uh, gu guide them, Lord, teach them, fill with your spirit, Lord, so that may they may impart your word correctly, and uh, be with the Spanish ministry as well, and the bus ministry, and the ushers, the greeters, the singers, everybody that does stuff in the church helps us do all for your glory. Thank you again for how good you've been to us, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so these last few weeks we've been doing a study on the book of First Peter. And so this lesson, we're going to start in, uh, we're still in chapter 1, and we're going to be in First Peter chapter 1, verses 10 and 12, and it says this, <clears throat> Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ, and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed that not themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Uh, this passage is dealing with Christ and salvation, but at the end of the passage, it's at the end of verse 12 there, it says uh, about the angels have desired to look into uh, angels are are real. They are not just uh, metaphorical in the Bible. Their angels are real, and they do exist. And uh, they exist in the world and, and in heaven. Uh, the Bible says that we entertain angels and unawares. And so, uh, it's an interesting study to think about angels and and who they are. Celestial beings created by God. They're they're not um, they're, they're not the winged white creatures that you see uh, uh, painted on occasions around Christmas time and stuff. They're uh, they're beings, they're, they're warrior beings, they're, they're dreadful beings. Every time somebody met some, an angel in the Bible, uh, they fell down in fear. Uh, you think of uh, when, they, when the angels rolled the stone away at the, at, the, at the tomb, the Roman soldiers just fell down. And, uh, and then other times in the Bible, angels were responsible for killing a great many people under the command of God. And so they're, they're dreadful creatures, and, and, uh, and they're created by God, they're created perfect. And the thing with angels is, is, is they don't understand grace. There are fallen angels. The Bible talks about those. Um, they fell with the devil uh, because the devil tried to lift himself above God, and uh, and and he fell, and he had his own angels with him that, that fell, and and so, uh, but the angels that that are still in heaven, still uh, the angels of God. They don't understand grace. They don't have that option. They, they do not sin. They do not go against the will of God. They do not know how to do that. Uh, and on the same hand, uh, because of that, they, they don't know the grace. They don't understand salvation. That's why uh, it says that the angels desire to look into. They desire to look into cross. They, they, can, they can have a knowledge of the cross. They have a knowledge of who Christ is. They know Christ is God. They know he is the almighty, omnipotent God, the, the creator that created everything. They know that. And they understand that, and they understood that when he uh, went to the cross. But uh, they have a knowledge of it, but they don't have, a, have an experience of it. And there's a lot of people today in the earth that have that knowledge. There's a lot of people that have knowledge of the Bible. There's a lot of people that claim to be Christians that have knowledge of the Bible, and even knowledge of salvation and how it works. But they haven't yet experienced it. They've never accepted Jesus Christ into their heart and felt his changing, moving presence in their lives. And, and, and so the salvation of God is something that his angels have hired to have. It's the desires of angels. And uh, so going back, I was talking about the cross, and Peter's talking in this passage of how the Bible 
outlines the, the sufferings of Christ and the cross before it was even written. This was the New Testament. The, the canon of Scripture was not finished yet. Uh, this epistle was given to, to Peter by the inspiration of God. It was inspired by the Holy Spirit. The same Spirit that inspired the rest of the Bible inspired these epistles and the other epistles that are in the New Testament, plus the Gospels and the Revelation. Um, and so... Uh, this is all inspired by the Holy Spirit, and because it's all got the same author, the Bible has over 40 different penmen in it, but they've all got the same author. They were all led and moved by the Spirit of God. And, and, uh, and so it's important to realize that the history of the world uh, hinges on the cross of Christ. The, the, before Jesus came to the world, everybody was looking for the Messiah, the, the Jewish nation was looking for the Messiah, their promised Messiah, and even those outside of the Jewish nation were, were looking for that promise, right? You think of the wise men, they weren't, they weren't Jewish, they, they came from a far country, but they were seeking Christ and the, the king of the Jews, and, and, and so, the, so the world was waiting for Christ, and then he came, and, and then he died on the cross for our sins, and, and that was a, a pivotal point, a point in history. In fact, we still today, even, even atheists tell time, uh, by Jesus. That's why we have, uh, you know, this is 2021 AD, uh, Amino Domane, which is like the year of our Lord. It's talking about Jesus Christ. And then you have BC, which is before Christ. And we, we, we tell time by that. And so it's an important thing. And, 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 and the cross is so important and more, and, and along with the cross of the resurrection, you know, um, the world looks and believes Jesus died and uh, they died on the cross. In fact, um, New Testament, uh, accounts how the Roman soldiers and, and, the, and the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, uh, came up with this conspiracy that the apostles had come and taken the body of Christ away. Uh, he had not truly risen from the dead. And so the world, uh, often a lot of the world considers that Christ, they, they know he still lived. Historically, it's a fact that Christ walked on this earth. Jesus of Nazareth was a, was a man that lived. And so they can't deny that historically, but they do deny his resurrection. But we don't. Resurrection. We know he rose from the dead. He was seen of over 500 people after he rose from the dead, and uh, and, and he went and died on that cross and rose from the dead and beat death, hell, and the grave for one purpose, and that's found in John 3:16. It says, "For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish." but have everlasting life. The whole point of it, the whole point of it all was for grace and salvation, for everlasting life to be brought to the world and be available for all people. And that was the whole point. And so going back to the whole point, the message of Jesus Christ and his cross is the message of the Bible. In fact, the entire Bible is a book about Jesus Christ. It's a, it's a book about God. Uh, it's not just a history book or a, or a, a theological book. It's not just a, a religious book. It's, uh, you know, the, you, can, you can find history in it. You can, you can find historical facts in it. You can find theology in it. You can find doctrine in it. And all those things are important and good. But above all else, the Bible is a revelation of God to, to us. To, to, to us as man. It's everything God wants us to know about him contained in the Bible. It is all, it is all perfect. It is all in, in whole. There are, there are no added, uh, there are no lost books, and there, and there are no books that have been added after the book of the Revelation was completed. The canon of Scripture was finished, and that which was, uh, in part, uh, was done away with, and, and so there's no more prophesying, there's no more tongues, there are no more apostles or signs of the apostles. We just simply have the Bible, the canon of Scripture, and, and, and we can dwell and hang our hats. And the entire Bible is focused on the message of the cross. In fact, from Genesis all the way to Revelation, it's focused on Jesus Christ. And there's a red line you can follow through the Bible. In fact, uh, after after Calvary and after three days in the resurrection morning, uh, Christ met with two disciples and walked along the Emmaus Road. And he took them through a Bible study while he was walking on the Emmaus Road. They didn't know it was Christ they were talking to. He had hid themselves from him. They assumed him just to be uh, just a, a, a traveler. And they were walking down the road with him. And, and, and Christ went through the beginning of the law all the way to the, what was finished of the canon at that of, of the canon of Scripture at that time. And, and he said, "You know what, Christ I ought not to Christ to suffer these things." In fact, it says, "And he said to them, O fools, and slow of heart, believe all that the." The prophets have spoken on not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter his glory. Uh, and then in, in verse 27 it says, In the beginning that Moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And so uh, the message of the Bible is the message of Jesus Christ. It, 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 he is the focal point of the Bible. So when you read your Bible, I want you to understand it's not, you're just not just reading it for instruction, though you have instruction there. And, it's, and, and, uh, and all Scripture is profitable for doctrine, for reproof and correction, instruction, and righteousness. It's all, 
it's all profitable for that, but the main theme of the Bible and the point of the Bible is to reveal God revealing himself to us, Jesus Christ revealing himself to us and, and showing us who he is exactly. That's the whole point of it, uh, not, uh, not for anything else. The main point of the Bible is that, and then once you realize that, then you'll start learning the doctrine. Then the doctrine makes sense. Then the scriptures make sense. Then, then everything makes sense to you, but that's the focal point. And because of the theme of the Bible and the whole point of the Bible and God's word is to show us Jesus Christ, the theme of our life should be about Jesus Christ as well. Uh, going back in the text, it says, Unto whom it was revealed, not unto themselves, uh, but unto us, they administer the things which are now reported unto you, and have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which the things are desired to look into. Um, once you're saved, you have the power of the Holy Spirit in, in your life, and, and, and that should testify in you. Uh, once you're a witness, you should be a witness. Uh, once you've witnessed Calvary, once you've went to the cross and, and realized what happened there and, and accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you should now be a witness for that. You should tell people about Jesus Christ and his work on Calvary, and your light should shine that. Your, your life should be a testimony for that. Your theme of your life should be Jesus Christ. It should be your theme and that theme alone. And so that's it for the lesson today. But the whole point is this the desire of angels. The angels desire to look into something that we have freely given to us and that we can experience at no cost. Jesus paid that cost to, uh, for us already. And so uh, <laughs> I hope that your life is a testimony for Jesus Christ and that the theme of your life is for Jesus Christ and not, nothing else. I'm going to pray and I'll see you all next week. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time we had to put your word out online. Just be with, be with us this week. Help us to be examples for you in all that we do. Thank you again for how good you are in Jesus' name.